the smell of a charred app block. Psst, hey, have you heard about The Dish? The Dish is the place where you can go every day for behind the scenes information and stories that we can't tell you on TV. Plus, your mind might find out who's going to win Survivor. It's all at The Dish at thescreensavers.com. Survivor tips now? Survivor tips. How about that? And now, one more time, we present to you the ultimate oh, gaming okay. machine 3.0. Here's the story so far. We started out with a new Athlon, which uh, Patrick promptly broke. <laughs> and then uh, we added a few new hard drives, of course, and a brand spanking new GeForce 2 card. Then we put more fans than we will ever need into it and tried to start it up. And as you can see, we ended up with a $10,000 paperweight. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, there's the voice stuff. None of that worked either. And there's Thresh, who got thrashed in our game of Quake 3 with the viewers. Hey, Patrick, why don't you explain to us how you uh, managed to destroy Uggum? Well, you went the long out, long winded, drawn out, uh, ugly explanation. I want a rational explanation. Rational? I don't know if there's a rational explanation, but I'll tell you what. I killed two Athlon ships. The first one I actually chipped with a heat sink. Folks, we've been talking about this on air for a long time. Uh, and we've actually been talking, actually, on the web. If you're not careful, uh, if you put the chip, the heat sink on improperly, or if you put a, a like a P3 heat sink and try to jam it on one of these, you can actually crack the Athlon chip, rendering it inoperable. Huh, you don't say. Well, you see where that little arrow is right there? That's actually pointing to the inoperable corner that I chipped off of this Athlon. This is a little corner. It won't yeah. work. Well, it, it, it was enough of a corner to, to wipe it out. It just no. doesn't degrade a little bit. It doesn't no. degrade a little bit. It doesn't run. To, it doesn't <laughs> turn it from a 1.1 to click. It's not like chipping off pieces of a candy bar. It just doesn't work that smooth. So the second one, which I went out and ran the credit card through one of our local computer cords, picked up a computer stores, picked up a Athlon, and I actually I found something very interesting with these faster Athlon chips, and it may be true of the, the P3s and the P4s. We don't know this for a fact. This is what we know for a fact. If you run one of these without a heat sink, even for a couple seconds, that even perhaps even one single second without a heat sink can melt it. Now, part of the reason we know that is because this particular processor actually now smells like somebody lit it on fire. So if you get no in close here, this is, the, this is the one with the arrow, but if you also look at, you can actually get in with the, if we had the 1.1 in here, you'd actually be able to see the little dirty marks where we actually managed to burn in, literally, the chip. We melted it. So I now have, I'm going to turn one into a bolo and maybe one into a cowboy <laughs> hat rack. Uh, you know, because, hey, everybody needs to kill a six, seven hundred dollars worth of chips in two days for the sheer joy of it. You know, I think we all learned some valuable lessons over this past week, Patrick. Yes, be very careful with heat sinks and make sure you always have one in before you put the power plug anywhere near an Athlon based system. So, should we take a, a look at the complete list of parts for Ugin 3.0? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, folks. Actually, should we see if it works? There we go. There's Let's do the, the list. list. 1.2 gigahertz Thunderbird. We've got a Gigabyte GA 7DX motherboard. Actually, we don't, but 512 megabytes of DDR memory, <laughs> the Elsa Gladiac Ultra, Sound Blaster Live Platinum 5.1, and we actually have substituted the IBM Death Star. We're having an exciting time with our new production system. Plex Rider 16X, a QPS 12X DVD ROM, Klipsch Pro Media V2 400 brain frying speakers, a Princeton Arcadia 32 inch monitor, an optical IntelliMouse, a Sidewinder Precision 2 joystick, the Sidewinder Game Commander. Do I have to keep reading this? Yeah, a lot of coolers, okay. too. Okay, you know what? This a is the entire page. This is the entire page of coolers that Russ designed into the system. Cooler, a selection of coolers so awesome. I actually had a geek in the store. I picked up the, the third 1.2 gigahertz chip this morning. They actually went, oh, wow, that's a lot of fans, dude. <laughs> so, all right, Patrick, enough right. talk. Enough talk. You were here all weekend. Trying to make this thing work. Let's see if you finally succeeded, shall we? Okay, we're gonna flip hit the, the switch, bro. <gasps> I hear fan. a fan. That's a good, good sign. Super orbs going. Chips I don't going. I see nothing on the screen though. Give it a second. I'm nervous, Patrick. We have a green light. We have signal. That's something. That's more than we got all week. Look at ah! that. It's we going. Actually, we made this a couple doesn't mean upgrades. anything yet though. Right or now. does it? Does it? Uh oh, the music's starting. Are we gonna count this one? I, I think it's going to work, man. I think it's going to work. This is the exciting part, folks. The, the problem with the, 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 the motherboard here is, unlike the Intel 815, 
the KT-133 is not quite as fast booting, also because we got so many SCSI drive packed into this thing, it takes a little while to boot. So here we go. Well, we're Patrick might just be covering detection. up for it not working again. Let me tell you something. Last week, we couldn't even get the BIOS to boot. This is a good sign. In fact, I've got some people looking at that motherboard trying to figure out just what exactly we managed to do to it. Very exciting stuff. All right. Here we go. This is the big test right here. Okay. PCI device listing, folks. The SCSI card should be coming up in a second. Let's see it. Come Let's on. It. The suspense. It's killing it's me. It's killing me. It's killing me. It's killing the guys in the production room. It's killing, yeah, they're like, come <laughs> on, let the, the machine going, why go is on. Taking so our executive producer, I can tell him going. It's all, it's the all fans. those fans in yeah, there, we exactly. We got to talk about this fan situation, Russ. It's a guy. I don't think it's going to work. This is killing me. I think it's busted. If it's busted again, I, I don't I quit. think the ultimate gaming machine is working. By sale. This is amazing. <laughs> it didn't work. It, it didn't work. No. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Starting windows. Wait a minute. What? You had to hit the screen. Is that it? Yeah. We that have worked. Windows 2000 Professional. It worked. We're even going to have a desktop in a second. Woo! <laughs> 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 the ultimate gaming machine. It's alive. That is the slowest boot. This thing stinks. How long did it take to boot up? How much money does this thing cost us? Hey, you $10, put seven SCSI drives in the system, you see how long it takes to boot. It took five minutes to boot up. This it thing's slow. Take five minutes. That wasn't an Athlon. Uh, it's looking, it's about still, I'm staring at a Windows screen. Tell you what, Martin, you can build the next one. <laughs> All right. Well, can we, can we show the people at home uh, what it can do? Of course we can show them. How about, how about a Quake 3 demo? This yeah, is the ultimate get, gaming this machine. This is amazing. If, if it'll even come up. Let's sign in. <laughs> All right. It's, I'm so glad it worked because, you know, the prop department spent a lot of money on confetti. We're just going to show you a basic uh, demo run here. We're going to keep it simple. We'll show you the cool stuff later on. We're going to talk about some of the benchmark scores and the frame rates we're getting out of this thing. Martin thinks the machine sucks. I think it plays a mean game of Quake. It's 1600 by 1200, 32-bit, 32-bit. That's not with bad. With everything maxed out. Yeah, we're doing all right with this. Are, are you sure? We can run it faster in the full time. No, demo. I, I think that that looks pretty good. Go for the total. Okay, and one last time, we're going to talk about the final total for the Ultimate Gaming Machine 3.0. $10,834. Not counting the extra six hundred dollars in Whoa, fried processors, week, which I'm turning into hat week. bands later on. Hey, for more uh. detailed information on how Patrick killed the ultimate gaming machine and then resurrected it, plus a complete parts list, go to the website yes. and stay tuned because we plan to upgrade Ugum as better hardware becomes available or as Patrick breaks the hardware that we have. You're having fun with this, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. All right. <laughs>